We had a great Northern Light show last night. Um, I went to bed early so I'd be able to get up and check it out and hope that you could see it. Sometimes the clouds move in. Um, you really never know for sure. But um, you could see it last night, so I filmed some of that. So that was a treat. Thanks for coming along today. I've unloaded my sled so far. I got my toboggan ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and unload my truck, put everything in the toboggan and get it tarped up and ready to hit the trail. this directly to the sled because it's heavy and I don't know that anything else will keep it down great. I'm just going to put a half hitch in this. That'll make it easy to get out. I'll do the other side here. There we go. So that's all the big stuff in the sled. I got a few things in the cab and then we'll go ahead and get it tarped up. All right, so I'm gonna finish getting my gear on and then we'll be out of here. For this trip, I'm gonna go ahead and take this spare seat off. I don't have anyone going with me, and I'm just gonna put a rack on back there in case I wanna carry a box on it. There, and then that just makes it easier, probably, and a little sleeker. I was by here two weeks ago and you can see that it hasn't froze up any. In fact, it's probably gotten a little worse. Um, it did warm up last weekend. It hasn't gotten super cold. And so I think that the trail is probably not as good as it was two weeks ago. Um, but we'll push on and see how it goes.
gorgeous day on the trail here. We're gonna take a look at some. And so this is a hazard that you kind of got to keep a peek out for. This is overflow, and so it's where probably the ice is cracked and water's flowed up on top of the ice. And when it gets really cold, that'll refreeze. But for now, that's slushy. Um, and so it's kind of like akin to going through a mud puddle when you're on a snow machine. And it's easy to get stuck in that if it's very deep. And so you want to avoid that. But it kind of shows two weeks ago when I was on this trail, there was really no overflow. And today, that's probably the fifth or sixth patch of overflow I've seen. So this trail, it warmed up in the last two weeks and now it's cooling back down. But the trail's kind of deteriorated during that time. So we need some good cold weather to firm that back up. Well, it's a nice day to be out here, but um, as I've said several times, the trail conditions are worse than they were two weeks ago. So we need to get a good cold snap uh, and firm this everything back up. Um, but we'll continue on here. Um, I'm sure there's great adventures ahead. area on the trail. Um, you can tell as we go through here that early on this river froze and then the ice broke up. It started migrating through and then the river refroze. And so this is just like chunks of ice laying everywhere. It's kind of a mogul field. And so every time you see a mogul, that's a chunk of ice under there.
So this is kind of interesting. Right behind me is where I camped two weeks ago. And we're going to cruise up there and you'll be able to see some snow machine tracks. But there's a set of moose tracks coming right down my snow machine tracks. Um, interesting. I think I found a good camp spot for um, the Iditarod and the, um, the Iron Dog. Probably for sure for the Iron Dog. And the reason I say for sure for the Iron Dog is... This is a long straightaway, so it'll be building up speed. They're coming from that direction. And then this is a corner here across the river. And this is really pretty good and smooth, so I think they'll come through here at a good pace. And right up here on the side of the trail, there's a tree there. And I'm hoping that I can get in behind that tree and get that leveled up so that I can put my tent there and so I, they aren't going to cut this corner too hard because of that tree and um, it could be exciting so we'll see <laughs> So this has a lot of potential. I think it's a good flat spot behind a tree so no one's going to hit you. Um, but right now the snow is a little wet. You could probably even make a snowball out of this. Well, not quite. But I'm going to pack this down right now. And it'll get snow before the iron dog and yada, yada, yada. But as long as, it's, as, long as it freezes hard again, which it will, this is going to be a nice firm platform. And so I'm going to go ahead and scoot the, pack this down a little bit right now so that when I come back out here, It'll be solid, and I might camp here tonight, we'll see. Okay, so I got this all packed down nicely. We'll take one little look at it, and I'm just gonna leave it to freeze. I won't camp there tonight, and I think it'll set up a good base. Okay, so I found a place I'm going to camp and I've packed down the trail here, packed, packed down where I'm going to put my tent. I'm going to put my tent facing that direction right there because the sun's going to set over that way and I'd like to be able to sit inside my tent and watch the sunset. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so you can see I went ahead and put down my kind of my footprint at least the boards that go below the footprint. Now I'll go ahead and put the foot footprint down. Okay, so then these get connected here, and then this pin here connects into that pole that we were just looking at. Right here.
like that, and then the whole rain fly holds it back. So you know where the door goes, and then the rest of it gets staked back. So on my first trip out, all I had was plastic tent stakes and they wouldn't pound. We only had like, by the time you pack the snow down like this, there's probably only six inches of snow. Um, and so, and see right there, that's as deep as these things will go and you hit solid ground. But that might be deep enough, but I did bring steel woods. Yep, that's going to work, I think. Well, that's it in ground, but I think it's going to be good enough. So we're going to go ahead and pound the rest of these stakes in, and then we'll move the stove and stuff into the, inside the tent. All right, I'm going to put my stove together, and most of it will get put together inside the tent. Um, so the lid... So I, when I built this whole thing, I built this box so that this so that the stove would fit in it. Otherwise, it's rolling around in your sled, and it and it just makes a disaster. It's strapped down in here, and then the lid also functions as something to set the whole stove on. And so I'll go put that in the tent, and then we'll come back and get this thing unpackaged. And to keep my hands from getting so filthy, I shared this in a different video, I have, I wear these gloves, they're just nitrite gloves, um, and that way I don't have to wash my hands out here or have my hands get really icky. And so this is ratchet strapped down in here so that it doesn't, because it gets pounded down the trail. Take the pipe out here, and I'll do the rest. Well, let's see what I'll do it here. So the legs to the stove. Look at that in a bit. I have this hoe. It goes together. There, so. Then you can reach in the, into your stove and pull stuff out of it. And the legs all hook on the pin so you can carry it in and out when it's hot. I have chains to carry it when it's hot. See how icky those are now, but I'm pretty much done with this. So, but I think I'll leave them on until I get done with this. The nesting stovepipe, we'll look at that. Nesting stovepipe is pipe that fits inside of itself. Here, and so there's a 
lower sections here. Some people go ahead and this is all the stove pipe they have. I have two other pieces of stove pipe that I use because I want to get my stove, I want to get the, the smoke coming out as high above my um, tent as I feel safe to do. And that way I don't get embers on my tent. One piece here and one piece that the flue goes in. And two weeks ago when I was out, my dampener was broke. Their cast iron is how they normally come. And cast, it's the third one I've broke. And so I decided enough of that, I'm gonna make one. So I made one, I've tested it at home. We'll see if it works. And the nice thing about a dampener though is it makes it so you can shut, you can hold the, the smoke and the heat down in your stove better. You can run without it. Um, but I don't think you can regulate your heat as well. And so the way it works is stove pipe, this is gonna go in here, this goes through, and uh, let's see, you can see that there's two eye welded bolts on there. And this thing fits through those. There. And so now what you can do, as you can see it in there, and I can, I can turn this and keep most of the heat and the smoke in the stove. Cut the smoke off and let smoke out. That's how that works. And so that's the first piece that goes on the stove. And then this will be the second one, and then this goes on. And then what I do with this is I use this, the box, I fill with wood and put it in there. That way I don't get wood chips and, and stuff all over my tent. So it's kind of, the whole thing has a purpose. Perfect stick for Rosa dog. So in my last video, I was talking about I never cook in my tent, which I don't cook in my tent, but somebody, somebody was watching my video and they said, well, you cooked in your tent because you were cooking a hot dog inside your stove. And I do cook a hot dog or cook things inside of the stove because if it's inside the stove, any smell from it will go up the chimney and not in the fabric of the tent and so it doesn't stink your tent up and a little bit of smell that might get in your tent from from you um eating in there i can live with that um because when it's this cold and right now it's not horrible out here by the way but when it's cold i'm not going to sit outside and eat um and um so i'm getting ready to cook a gourmet dog tonight uh, I'm kind of excited about it because as I said earlier when I ate that muffin top, I haven't really had anything since breakfast and so I got some really good dogs. I got some pretzel buns, pretzel hot dog buns, so that should be a real treat. Um, and so we'll go ahead and get busy on some dogs here pretty soon. We'll let the fire get ripping a little bit more. The fire's going pretty good right now. We'll take a quick little peek in there and see how things are happening. And 
check this dog out here. Look at that. Nice. I got more pretzel bun than dog, but that's going to be okay. And I happen to bring some ketchups from McDonald's. Okay, I'm going to turn in for the night, so I'm going to close my vent here. And then I'm going to close my flue. So basically then, it's going to hold everything that's in this stove, and so it's just going to sit there and smolder. Uh, hopefully it'll stay warm all night. Currently, it must be, I don't know, 80 or 90 in here. It's hotter than sand. And so, um, hopefully it'll cool down a little bit here so I can sleep. So last night it was forecast to get down to zero and I didn't stoke my stove before I went to bed because I knew it wouldn't make it through the night anyways and I didn't see the point. My sleeping bag's warm enough to keep warm. But so this morning I got up and I started a fire and um, we're going to stay in the sleeping bag until it's warm enough to get out. So we'll check back in a little bit when it's warmer. So we had a great Northern Lights show last night. Um, I went to bed early so I'd be able to get up and check it out and hope that you could see it. Sometimes the clouds move in, um, you really never know for sure. But um, you could see it last night and so I filmed some of that. So that was a treat. Um, so it's warmed up enough to jump out of my sleeping bag for a bit here. And so I'm gonna get some coffee going breakfast going and um it's still we're still hours before it gets light but i've slept really as much as i can so oh look at that i got ice in there yesterday last night last night these had warmed up pretty good but it looks like they nearly froze last night oh great so I get a splash of water out of it, the rest of it's ice. Well, that'll thaw out here. You can 
see, well, maybe you can see, probably half of this is ice now. Half of it's not, but that'll thaw out. So while that's going, I'm also going to use my little pan. First, I'll put some coffee in this and set it out of the way. I'm going to use this little pot to get some water going too. That way I can have breakfast and coffee at the same time. Nothing but the best, you know. You're just going to have oatmeal for breakfast because it's easy. set this off. I don't want that in there until it starts percolating. Okay, it's been a little bit. Um, you can hear the percolator going. I haven't put the coffee in that yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this diffuser into it. Coffee sapping in. And um, we got some oatmeal here. And walnuts and um, Raisins, and if I'm lucky, there's some cherries in there. I don't really know. Stir that up. Another pack of oatmeal right here. Once that's stirred up, I'm going to put the lid on it and just let it sit there for a few minutes. And it'll be time for breakfast. You see, coffee's already turning color. That's nice. And so um, we'll check back in when all this is done. learned last weekend or two weekends ago is that this little handle gets hot so I got a glove on for that I'm not gonna lie I'm kind of looking forward to tasting that I personally am a French press fan but a couple weeks ago, I got this out and took it on a camping trip, and I think it was better than French press coffee. It was awesome. But maybe it's a matter of timing or whatnot. Who knows? I would say very good. I got my oatmeal here. Fruit, and there's walnuts in there. It's all right. Oatmeal's never my favorite. I prefer protein for breakfast, but this is easy. And for now, that's what I'm doing. So um, we'll take a look outside in a little bit after breakfast. We'll go out and take a look around, see what it looks like out there. I know it's getting light out. It's pretty light out, actually. So it'll probably be time to start breaking things down and getting ready to go. 
All right, so we're gonna go take a look outside. It's forecast to be a gorgeous day, and I did go out earlier briefly, and um, it looked like it was gonna be a pretty nice day. Although, wow, that first look didn't look great. Oh. Looks like a lot of cloud cover to me. I'm disappointed when I was out here earlier. I thought it was gonna be clear. Oh. I guess we'll look at the sunrise. I'm doing a time time lapse sunrise right over there. So we'll see what that looks like. I'm disappointed. Um, but at any rate, it is what it is. It's still a gorgeous day. But it's a night bit cold out here. Every time I stay out, I always um, worry a little bit about when I have to start my snow machine, even though this never failed me. But um, let's hope that it works again. All right, so we'll let that warm up. Meanwhile, we'll start taking the tent down and getting the sled packed and getting ready to go here. All right, the very first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull my stove out and dump all the coals out of it, and that way it can start cooling while I take the rest down. And so we'll go ahead and do that. One of the cool things about this is that everything fits inside of the stove. And I ratchet to strap this thing down inside the box just because it's going to get pounded down the trail. So I ratchet strap it into the box and then ratchet and then tie the box directly to the sled. And then the bungee strap keeps the lid on it when it's bouncing down the trail, even though it's got a strap.
this is called flat light. You can't really see, I mean, right in front of us, you can kind of see the track, but other than that, you really can't see any detail in the snow. And so it's really kind of dangerous to be riding because um, you never know what's coming up. I can say that I have had a couple boo-boos in flat light before. And so um, I'm going to end up having to stand up on my machine pretty much all the way back just so I can, it gives you a little, if you're higher up, it's kind of like this compared to this. You get a little bit better detail if you're standing up. And so I'm going to stand up pretty much all the way back on my snow machine just so that I can see so that hopefully everything goes well. And so um, we're going to hit the trail again here. I don't know that we'll record too much between now and the truck just because there's it's kind of ugly um, in terms of um, camera stuff. Um, even in terms of being here, it's not as pretty as it was yesterday. It's still gorgeous in its own way. I mean, like, I think that this, looking at this bank over here, the frost on the trees and stuff, it is still gorgeous, but um, probably won't stop a whole lot unless we see something exciting. few miles I like to stop and make sure everything's still here, make sure this box is here, make sure that my stove's doing well and everything's tied down. Looks like everything's golden. So we are in the middle of that river with the ice chunks I talked about yesterday. And you can kind of sort of see, I can see, scooch out here just a little bit. You can see where it's collapsed right in there. Wow. You wouldn't want to go through that. And you can see this overflow that's refroze, and you can hear the difference when you're driving over it. several more days of cold weather to go to drive on a thing. So this is one of the hazards that's all over this trail right now. Since we don't have very much snow, there's places where trees are falling down and there's stobs sticking out. And if those stobs weren't there, you wouldn't even know anything was there. If you were sinking down in there too much, you could hit that log. That happens to people. So just yesterday, this is water that was flowing pretty good. I stopped and looked at it, but I don't know if I filmed this one. <laughs> 